Hello everyone, I'm back with another tutorial. Um, I'm doing a 16 inch 4x4 four four basket stitch and I will be doing um, a PDF when I do all the other sizes but this is a, um, a 16 inch and I used 3.25 millimeter needles to cast on for the, um, the rib using double knitting wool or oh, yarn as some people call it and I have 48 stitches and I knit six rows in one by one twisted rib and for anyone who doesn't know how to do twisted rib you just knit into the back of the knit stitch every knit stitch on every row so that was for six rows and then I changed to the um four millimeter needles which I'm using now and the pattern is I've done the first two rows but the next two rows are the same so we are going to with 48 stitches I've divided the stitches into four so I started with two stitches two knit stitches and ending with two knit stitches you can start with four knit stitches and end with um four purl stitches but I like it to be the same on both ends so I'm knitting I've done two rows and I have another two rows to do with this we're going to knit two and purl four and then knit four And then pull four again. And then knit the last two stitches. And I always knit into the back of the last knit stitch. You get a neater edge on the um on the edge. And now for the next row, we're just alternating those stitches so instead of starting with knit two we're going to start with purl two so that's purl two and the same as the other row but it's knit four instead of purl four and then purl four so this row you are knitting four and purling four And purl four we are now at the last six stitches so I'm going to knit four and purl two so that's the four rows of the pattern which was started with knit two, purl four, knit four, purl four, knit four, to the last two stitches, knit two. And then on the other row you started with purl two, knit four. Just alternated the stitches on the um the wrong side. So that's the first four rows and that's the first four rows of the pattern. And then the next four rows are just alternating what we've already done. So instead of knit two, I'm starting with purl two. And then where we have the knit stitches, the purl stitches, we're going to knit over those. So that's one, two, three, four. And then the next four knit stitches, we're going to purl over those. So it's knit over the purl and purl over the knit. 
So we're at the end of that row now and I'm going to knit the last six stitches. So that's knit four. And purl four and purl two, sorry, purl two. So that's the fifth row of the pattern and the sixth row you start with knit two and purl four. Then knit four and purl four. Now we're at the last six stitches, so I'm going to purl four. It's four and knit the last two stitches. And the next two rows are just a repeat of the two rows you've just done. So we're going to knit two. Sorry, we're going to purl two. And then knit four. Purl four. And we are at the last six stitches, so I'm going to knit four. And purl two. Now we're on to the eighth row. And the eighth row, knit two, purl four, knit four. And just repeat those stitches, purling four and knitting four, and I'll meet you at the end of that row. And we are at the last six stitches, so I'm going to purl four. And knit two. And that is the eight rows of the pattern. And so you just start your next four rows with knit two, purl four, knit four. Purl four and do that for four rows and then the next four rows you start with purl two knit four you're going to knit um i'm knitting this till it measures five inches and when i get to five inches i'll be up to the armholes and i'll be back then well that's the back done up to the armholes and i have knit you can see five inches and my five inches is I count up the squares I like these patterns kind of patterns because once you've done the back you don't need to measure any other parts that you do because you just go by the number of the pattern well, there's four rows to these so we go one two three four five six seven eight that's four rows to each little square, so that's eight rows, that's 32 rows. It's done up to the armholes. So we're going to do the armholes now, and I'm going to cast off two stitches at the beginning of the next two rows. It doesn't matter what, what stitch is there, I am just doing knit stitches for the, the cast off. So we knit one. stitch over knit the next one and take that next stitch over so that's two stitches I've cast off there and the next stitch we're on to the new new part of the pattern so I'm going to purl three stitches and carry on with the pattern to the other end of the row and I'm at the other end of the row and I'm now going to cast off another two stitches. 
knit wise. One, two, and then just pattern across that row now. So that's the second decrease, and now I'm going to knit another two rows. And the first two stitches and the last two stitches will be knit stitches. No matter what the pattern sees, do those two knit stitches. So that's one, two, and then I'm doing two purl because that's where the pattern starts again. And I'm coming to the end of the row and I'm going to purl two. And then knit the last two stitches. And then on the second of those two rows, the first two stitches are purl. So you're going to purl those two stitches. Knit the next two. And then just follow the pattern to your last two stitches, which will be purl two. And now we're at our last four stitches, we're going to knit two and purl the last two stitches. And now from that row, we will be decreasing on every alternate row so we are changing stitches as well because we've done the four rows but you're going to knit the first stitch slip the second stitch knit the third stitch and pass that slipped stitch over and then work the pattern so that's knit and then it's purl over the four and you're going to pattern to the last three stitches now we are at the last four stitches and I've done a, a knit on that last stitch there it should have been a purl <laughs> to take it back out again and the last four stitches we're going to knit the first stitch knit the next two stitches together and knit the last stitch and that's how the decreasing goes you're going to knit one slip one knit one and pass the slip stitch over at the start of the row and you knit until the last three stitches and then you knit two together and then knit one and on every alternate row, you'll be decreasing like that. But on the, the wrong side row, you purl the first two stitches. No matter what the pattern is, you purl those two stitches. And then just carry on with the pattern to your last two stitches. So we're at the last four stitches, I'm going to knit one and the last three stitches are purled so I'm going to purl those. So on every right side you are going to, at the start of the row, knit one, slip one knit one and pass the slip stitch over, knit across to the last three stitches and you will knit two together and then knit one and then on the wrong side you will purl two pattern across to the last two stitches and purl two and that is how the decreasing goes and do that until you have 16 stitches left and I will come back then so I now have 16 stitches left on the um, the needle 
and I have knit the row where I've decreased down to 16 stitches but I'm not knitting the row on the other side that you do on the wrong side I'm picking the stitches up here because when you pick these stitches up to do the neck you knit that row anyway so I'm just putting them onto a, a stitch holder So the actual body measurement of this is 9, so that means it's going to be 18 inches, but it's a 16 inch cardigan. But you do need an extra couple of inches because you don't do it to the exact measurement of the body. So if you're doing a 16, you want it to measure 18. If you're doing 18, you want it to measure 20. So that was that, and the side measurement was 5 inches. The full length back measurement is nine inches so you want this all this the whole thing to measure nine inches from the the bottom to the um the shoulders and then... i am now casting on the stitches for the um the left front of the cardigan and i have two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen seventeen i want twenty two stitches so i am doing cable cast on I didn't show this at the um when I did the back, but just in case anybody doesn't know, cable cast on is you knit into the back of the stitches. You don't knit through the stitch loop. So that's eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, and the last one. 22. I'll count them to make sure. 2, 4, 6, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I've only got 21. I missed a one somewhere. Twenty-two. And I'm going to knit six rows in twisted rib, one by one twisted rib. And I did tell you how to do it, but I'm going to show, when I did the back, I'm showing you the back. A twisted rib, you just knit into the back of the knit stitch, like that. And then you knit normally into the purl stitch. Knit into the back of the knit stitch. The front of the purl stitch is normal, the back of the knit stitch. And that's all you do for twisted rib, just knit into the back of every knit stitch on every row. I've worked out the stitches for the um the front. And I'm changing to four millimeter needles. So I'm going to start off with a uh, knit one. Knit four purl. Four knit. Four purl, four knit, four purl, and one knit. So that makes one knit at the start and one knit at the end. And you start with, after the knit, you have four purl and you'll end with four purl and one knit. 
that's the way um, I want it to go. So next row. Next row will be pearl, one pearl, four knit, four pearl, and one pearl. So those are the first two rows and the next two rows will be exactly the same. So I pause the video till I do those and come back with the next set. So that is the first four rows of the pattern and now we're going to alternate those stitches we've just done. Instead of starting with a knit like we did before, we're going to start with a purl. And the next four stitches are knit over the purl stitches. And purl over the knit stitches. And that's the first row of the, the changeover stitches. Then the second row is more or less the same as the first, what you did the first row. Knit one, pull four, knit four. And the next two rows are the same as the last two rows you've just done. And I will be back when I finish those. So that is the eight rows of the pattern. And you'll just keep repeating those eight rows. The first row you start with purl one and knit four for the next, the next rows and so on until it measures five inches and then I will be back to show you how to do the armhole shaping. The left front now measures five inches so I'm going to do the decreasing at the armhole. So I'm going to cast off two stitches to start Holds wrapped around my handles on my <laughs> drawers here. That's two. And now I'm going to carry on with the pattern, and this is a change of stitch row, so it's two purl and four knit. And knit the last stitch. And that's the cast off stitches. Now I'm going to do the next row. And I'm going to pattern to the last two stitches. Now at the last three stitches, I'm going to knit one stitch and pull the last two stitches. And I'm going to knit two more rows before I start the decreasing and I'll be back then. 
and we are now at the uh, decreasing row and it's also a change of pattern row but when you had knitted this up to five inches you had to finish on um, the wrong side row before you did the cast off stitches forgot to tell you that so we are onto the first decreasing row so after the cast off stitches you've knit three more rows so we're going to knit one slip one knit the next stitch pass that slip stitch over and then pattern there's a change of pattern so it's purl instead of knit And we are into the next row, the second row of the decrease. So we're going to pattern to the the last two stitches. Yeah, the last two stitches, and we're going to purl those two stitches. Now the next row, and every alternate row after that is a decreasing row so we're going to do what I showed you on the other row just knit one slip one knit one and pass that slip stitch over and then just carry on with the pattern to the end of the row and keep on doing that increase decrease sorry on um, every alternate row until you have 10 stitches left and I will be back then We now have 10 stitches left on the needle and we finished on the right side row. So we're going to turn it onto the wrong side and we're going to cast off three stitches. That's one. Two. Three, and it across that row to the last two stitches. The pearl is two. So we've cast off three stitches, and now we're going to decrease on the next three rows at the neck edge. So we're going to take one, two, three stitches off at the neck edge. But we're going to be decreasing as normal on the armhole edge. We're changing stitches here. I'm knitting to the last two stitches. I'm going to knit those two stitches together. Then we turn our work and purl the next two stitches together, the first two stitches. Purl to the last two stitches. Oh, I'll have to go back there. I've made a mistake on that. I haven't put that slip stitch over very well so I'm going to have to pause that a minute so that's that but right and I'm going to pull the first two stitches together pull one two three stitches there and the next row because there's only four stitches left but we need to decrease at both ends so we're going to knit the first stitch slip that stitch and knit those two last stitches together and slip that stitch over that stitch 
And we have two stitches left, so we're going to purl those two stitches together. And get the needle through. And that's the left front done. Just need to cut that wool off and pull it through. And the next part after this is the right front. So the right front, I won't show you until I get up to the armholes because you do exactly what you did with this one. Your 22 stitches, six rows of one by one twisted rib and then do the the pattern exactly as I showed you in the um, for the left front and when you get up to the armholes I will come back and show you how to do that so now I'm up to the armhole on the um, the right side and I did it on this end on the left side but this side I've knitted along that row finished on the right side instead of the wrong side and so now I'm going to cast off two stitches that's one two and then carry on knitting across the row So that's two rows, including the row that I had to knit across to get to the other side. So I'll have two more rows to knit before I do the decrease. And I will be back when I've done that. And I've knitted across the, um, this is the third row. And this is the end where I cast the stitches off there. So those last two stitches I'm going to knit. And the fourth row, those first two stitches I'm going to purl. And then carry on with the pattern over the rest of the row. So now I'm going to start the decreasing because um, I've done the, the four rows from the, well it's three rows actually, it was one row going across there and then another three rows after the um the cast off stitches so whereas on the the left front we did the shaping at the start of the row on the right front it's going to be done at the end of the row so i'm going to knit to the last three stitches and this is a change of pattern as well row so Now I'm at the last three stitches and I'm going to knit two together and knit one. And the next row is just first two stitches you purl and then just knit the, the stitches as, as you see them they're a knit, knit them, if they're a purl, purl them. And that is the two row for the decreasing, so it's going to be every other row now where you're going to knit to the end of the row and knit two together and then knit one. And uh, the row after that is purl to and pattern to the end of the row. And that's how you do the decreasing. And you're going to do that until you have 10 stitches left. And I will be back then. So I am now up to the, um, the next shaping. And I have 10 stitches and I finished on the wrong side. 
So I'm going to turn onto the right side and I'm going to cast off three stitches at the start of this row. That's one. Two, three, and I'm going to knit to the last three stitches. The two together, knit one. And now we're going to decrease at the neck edge three times on the next three rows. So we're going to knit to the last two stitches here. I'm going to purl two together. On the next row, we're going to knit two together. And knit into the back of the, the loops. And knit two together. And knit one. And the end of this row, we're going to purl one. Purl two together, and that's the the three stitches decreased at the, the end. And then we're going to knit two stitches together here to finish off the and that is the the neck done on the right front. I need to cut that off when finish. So the next part of the tutorial will be the sleeves and I will come back when I get round to those. I'm back with the sleeve and this is the one I did earlier and as a two sleeves both the same I can knit one first and get all the instructions right before I start on the um, the tutorial for the sleeve so that's what I've done so that one is all finished that sleeve and I have I've done the rib I'll blow this up so you can see better I've done the six rows of rib cast on 28 stitches and I use 3.25 millimeter needle I've only got one here because I'm finished with that now but I've done the six rows of the one by one twisted rib and I'm now going to do the pattern. Get some wool out here. So the first row of the pattern isn't just start with knit four, pull four. That's knit four, purl four, that's two, can't count. And that's that row and I've ended with knit four. I started with knit four and I've ended with knit four. And the next row is just a reverse of that. New needle I think. And I'm using four millimetre needles now. In case I didn't see that before, I can't remember whether I said it or not. <laughs> so it's purl four. Knit four. Purl four. Now we'll meet you at the end of that row. So 
so that is the end of that row and I started with purl 4 and ended with purl 4. Now the next row is the third row is the first increasing row so I'm going to increase on this row and on every sixth row after that. This is the third row. So I'm going to knit one, knit into the next stitch, into the front and then into the back and that's your increase stitch. And then the pattern is just knitting and purling what you actually see. If you see a purl stitch, knit a purl stitch. If you see a knit stitch, knit a knit stitch. Until you get on to, after you've done the four rows and you alternate those stitches and do exactly the same. The pattern is very easy. You just knit what you actually see. There's nothing to think about. And then I'm going to knit to the last three stitches. And I'm at the, the last three stitches and I'm going to do what I did at the start and it into the front and then into the back of the same stitch and that's your increase on that row. Now you're going to have five where you had four knit stitches before. You're going to have five there so your next row just purl those five stitches. This is the fourth row of the um, the pattern. So that's purl five and then, oh, I've done a mistake on that stitch. I'll have to take it off and make it into a knit stitch. That's it. That I do make mistakes sometimes. <laughs> that was simple. Just take the um, the stitch off the needle and twist it round to make it the um, the knit stitch instead of a purl stitch. So we're going one, two, three, four. And we're on to the last five purl. And we're just going to purl those five stitches now. Now the next row is the change of the stitch where we're going to alternate it where you had five purl stitches but this time I'm going to knit one stitch this would be how the pattern would be going with five stitches anyway you would knit one stitch and purl the next four, the next four stitches sorry And then knit over the four purl stitches. So we're at the last five stitches. So I'm going to purl four of them. And knit the last stitch. So well, that's the changeover of the stitch. So the next three rows, you will just be knitting what you actually see. If you see a purl stitch, knit a purl. If it's a knit stitch, knit it. And that's how the pattern works. So we go one purl stitch, four knit stitch. And you will be carrying on knitting until increasing on every sixth row until you have 38 stitches and then carry on knitting up to the armholes until it measures five and a half inches and I will be back then when I get that far. Well I have knitted the sleeve up to five and a half inches and I'm now ready to start the, um, the decreasing 
But before I do that, I'm going to give you a little insight into how I work out the decreasing because this is my own pattern. I'm busy working this one out and I'm working it out as I'm knitting it. And when you do the decreasing on the, um, the sleeve, you want it to match the back so you get exactly the same number of decreases on the, the back as what you have on the, um, the back. Now what I do, this is what I do, I blow this up a little bit so you can see better. I know when I did the back, um, when I cast off the two stitches on each end, um, I knit two more rows. So I actually started a decrease on the fifth row. And what I do is I count up the number of decreases. This is something, you know, it's a little bit hard to see sometimes where to go one. With this one, with the back, I counted up one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There are fourteen decreases on the um on the back. So that is what I'm going to need on the sleeve. So what I do, I say 14, you're taking a stitch off each end on those 14 stitches, those 14 decreases, so that is 28 stitches. And I'm going to cast off two at each end, so that's, that's 32 stitches. And I want to be left with six stitches for the, um, the top, so the way I work it out is like this. That's... Two four stitches, that's what um, I'm going to be casting off at each end before I start the decreasing. And then there are 28 stitches in the 14 decreases. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight. Those are the 28 stitches that I'll be decreasing on each side of the um, the sleeve and I am left with two, four, six stitches which was what I wanted but if I'd been left with four stitches I would have added another decrease on the um, at the start I would have done it on the fifth row but then I would have added another four rows before I decreased again and that would have given me six stitches so just for anyone wanting to know that might want to work out their own patterns, that's how I work out the um the decreasing for the um the sleeves. And now I show you how to do this now. So I'm going to cast off I'm on the right side row. It is you have to be careful with this pattern that you're on the right side row. I know by the the cast on edge on the um the rib which side I'm on. So I'm going to cast off two stitches. I'm just doing the casting them in knit ways. One, two, and then I'm going to knit across and it's a change of stitch. So I'm going from purl here to knit and then purl on those stitches. So I'm going to knit across the row. And now I'll meet you at the end of that row. And now I'm going to decrease. I've done those two stitches on that end. I'm going to decrease on the other end now. And I'm just going to purl those stitches because they're all purl stitches coming up there. That's one. Two. And then I'm going to knit the stitches. Switching from knit to purl all the way across the row. So that's a decrease done on both ends and I'm going to knit another two rows and then I'll show you how to decrease.
So the two rows that I'm going to knit, I'm going to knit the first two stitches and knit the last two stitches. Doesn't matter what stitch, but those knit ones here anyway. So I'll be knitting the first two and knitting the last two. And when I do the other side, there will be purl the first two and purl the last two. That's because of the... Um, so that you have that same edge like you have that on the um, the back. On the armhole edge. So I'm now going to show you how to do the decrease and this is a change of stitch row. So you're going to knit the first stitch, slip the second stitch, knit the third stitch, slip that past slip stitch pass the slip stitch over the knit stitch and then I'm going to where it says purl I'm going to knit four and then purl four over the the four knit stitches and I'm going to do that till I get to the last three stitches and I'm at my last four stitches so I've got that one to knit Knit two together and knit the last stitch and the second row on the wrong side we're going to purl the first two stitches doesn't matter what stitch you have on the other side you have to purl those two but it's in line with the pattern anyway so and I'm going to knit and purl until I get to the last two stitches and I'm at my last three stitches and they're all purl stitches but even if they were um, whatever the stitch is you do purl so that's how you decrease and keep on doing that until you have that's on every other row now until you have six stitches and I will come back then so that is the decreasing up to the last six stitches and that row I decreased on that row but I didn't knit the row on the other side so I've ended on the um, the actual decreasing row because when you pick the stitches up to do the neck, you knit that stitch, that you knit that row anyway. So that's the way I work out. And there are exactly fourteen decreases from the first one after the from the fifth row. There are fourteen decreases, which is the same as the back. And my next. Part will be showing how to put the neck and the in the bands on. I'm now going to put the neck on the um, cardigan but before you start make sure that you have every piece facing the right side and the right side is you can see the I blow it up better so you can see that's the right side the wrong side is where that edge curls in and you can tell the right side um, there because this pattern is the same on both sides it's a reversible pattern so before you start make sure you have every piece the right side up because you can't make a mistake and pick up the stitches on the wrong side so I'm starting off with the, um, the right front this is the right front I'm going to pick up nine stitches on the right front I'll start down here in a little end for sewing in there so that's one two three four Five, 
five. Six. Seven. You might find it a little bit difficult, but just try your best to get nine stitches in here. Because it is very short, the uh, thing that's eight. And the last one, nine. So that's the nine stitches of the, the right front. And I'm now going to pick up six stitches on one of the sleeves. I'm making sure I'm on the right, the right side there. Because you're actually working on the right side when you're picking the stitches up. So that's six off the sleeve. And pull your and your ends because these are the ends I leave on for um for sewing. So just pull it tight when you've you get to the end there, and then you want sixteen stitches off the back, and you're using three point twenty five millimeter needles to pick up the stitches, which which you will be doing for the um the band as well to knit the band. That's one, two, three, four, that's the stitches off the back and then you want the other well, six stitches off the sleeve. Making sure you're on the right side. And I'm going to knit across those stitches. Some people like to sew the... Um, all the raglins up before they put the neck on but I prefer to do it this way and then we have the the left front now my friend um, knit this card again and she made a mistake when she was picking up the left front and she had it the wrong way like that she didn't check the um, the thing and she picked the stitches up from there to there and couldn't understand why it didn't look right. And I had to put it right for her at our bingo night. <laughs> so make sure you have that on the right side. So you want nine stitches from there. From the left front, that's one. Two. Three, eight, nine. So that's all the stitches for the the neck, and you should have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty. 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46 stitches. And then you're going to knit the first row, just a knit stitch. And knit that row all the way across, just knitting it. And I will meet you at the end of that row. And I'm on to my last four stitches. And that is the knit row. First row where it gives you, as you can see, like a garter edge. The 
the start of the um the neck band and now i'm going to knit four rows and knit one pearl one rib twisted rib the same as what i did in the um the cuffs and the, the bottom of the cardigan so it's knitting into the back of the stitch purling one stitch knit into the back and purl and knit into the back of the knit stitch and I'm going to do that all the way across the row going to do that for four rows and then I will be casting off the stitches So that's four rows I've done in the um, the twisted rib and now I'm going to cast off. I'm casting off in the same stitch that I was knitting in the twisted rib. I'm going to knit the first into the back of the first stitch, knit the purl stitch and then take the knit stitch over the top of the purl stitch. Don't pull it tight. You just want it loosely for the um, the neck so you get plenty stretch in it. And that's how you're going knitting into the back of the knit stitch as you did as you were knitting. That is if you're doing a twisted rib that is. But knitting in rib gives you a little bit more slack in the... Um, in the neck band, as long as you don't pull the stitches tight after you've cast them off, just cast them off and leave them as they are. As you can see, the stitches I've cast off there a little bit pull there, there's a little bit stretch in them. Now we've cast off all the stitches, I'm just going to cut off the the wool and thread it through that last loop and tighten it off and that is the the neck done with a little bit stretch in it and now for the sewing up of the the raglins before I put the um before I put the bands on. And when I saw the, um, the raglan seams up, I've just put a couple of pins in to keep them in place. And I do a flat stitch. That is a flat stitch, is holding the two pieces together like that and just going from one side to the other, the stitch, the edge of the stitch. And you don't pull the stitches tight when you're doing, just pull them through until they close up the seam. Like that. And you look on the other side. That's what it looks like on the other side. It's a flat seam so it doesn't sort of stand out and... If you pull the stitches tight when you're sewing you will gather the seam and the seam will come out shorter than it should be so you just pull them slightly to close up the seam that's all you need to do you don't pull them till they're very tight take that stitch out have my pin cushion there i'm putting my pins in Now you're coming to the to the cast off edges of the um the sleeve in the back this is when I get down to there. The 
The only part I over sew is the, um, that's what you call over sewing, when you hold the two pieces together like that and go over them, is where the cast off stitches are. And uh, to finish it off, I put the needle through, wrap the wool around the needle, pull it tight, do that three times, that's once, twice, three times, and then cut off the excess wool. And that is how you sew a flat stitch seam as you can see it on the other side it's neat and when you pull it there should be a little bit stretch in it if there's no stretch at all in it you've pulled it you've sewn it too tight and the seam will gather up and so the seam won't be as long as it should be so it'll be a lot sure the seam will be shorter so that's how you do flat stitch now I will sew the rest and I'll come back and I'll show you how to do the um, the sides and the sleeve seams. Now I'm sewing the um, the seams. I've sewn up the, um, the sleeve seam. I'm going to show you. The, the side seam is exactly the same way. So you hold the two pieces together side by side like you did with the raglins. You don't put them like that. You hold them side by side like that and just start off the stitch one side and you take one stitch stitch from one side and go across to the other side and take the corresponding stitch on that side and there and that is flat stitching you flat stitch the the ribs on the cardigan, the same as the um, the raglan seams. So that's that flat stitch. And you look at on the other side. That's the um, the seam down there. And now for the. The actual side seam. Let it pin a little bit close up there. We're going to do a back stitch for the um the side and the sleeve seams. And the back stitch is just putting the needle in, bringing it out. And where the wool came out there, you go back behind it. And come out a little way in front. Go back behind where the other stitch finished off. And come back in front again. And you pull these stitches tight when you're doing these ones. It's not like the raggling ones. So behind. And come back in front. Behind. And come back in front, and that's how you do back stitch. As close to the edge as possible because you don't want a big bulky seam. And you just carry on up to the the point where the other seam finished off. And that is the seam caught up with the other one. And you take your needle through to the back, back of the work to finish it off. And you just go 
the stitches where you've been stitching you see the lines down there where you've been stitching you just go behind the stitch wrap the wool around the needle it's once twice three times and that secures your Yes, stitch so it won't come loose. I haven't got my scissors here to cut that off. Well, some big ones there. Uh, cut that off. And I'll turn that seam the right way so you can see the, the finished part. And that is how that that part of the seam looks. You have to do the other side now to match that side, and then I will be back and show you how to put the bands on. I have put the button band on, and I'm going to do the buttonhole band now, and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's exactly the same. Was putting the um, the button band on, except you'll be putting buttonholes in between. And when you're doing the um, the buttonhole band, you'll be wanting some stitch markers. I have mine in here, and you will want five stitch markers. So I'm going to take four. That's five stitch markers for the upper where you're going to place the buttons, the buttons, the button holes. Back up again. And you are going to pick up 53 stitches. That's what I picked up on that side. I picked up 53, but sometimes it could be 51, 52. One or two stitches won't make any difference, so you needn't worry if you don't get the exact amount, but um, I had 53 on there, and I'm going to show you how I pick the stitches up. I start with the... Put the needle right through the first... The actual first stitch goes right through the whole stitch, not through half of the, the stitch. Put the little end to sew in. I'll blow that up so you can see better. And I pick up three stitches. That's one. Oops, I've lost that stitch. One. I have a little bit of trouble here because I oversewed the uh, the end that was that was left out there <laughs> on this. That's two. So I picked up three stitches and I missed the next one. So every time I pick the stitches, I pick up three, and I miss one stitch. So I'm going to miss that one and go on to the next one. That's one. Two. Three. And I'm going to miss the next one. That's one, two, three. So that's all the way down. Pick up three and miss one. One, two, three. And this is the next one, that's that one I'm going to miss, so I'm going on to that one. 
one, two, three, So that's all my stitches picked up. I'll count and see how many stitches I have now. That's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 48, 50, 52. So I have 52, so I'm going to make a, an extra one on the bottom, and I think there's a space for another one here. So that's 53 stitches, and now I'm going to do the first row is going to be in a knit row, just knit, like I did on the um the neck. I'm almost at the end of that row now, the knit row. And now I'm going to knit two rows and knit one per one rib. And then I'll be placing the buttonholes. We do four rows all together and then cast off the... Um, So I'm going to knit two rows first and knit one purl one rib and the same twisted rib that I've done for everything else on the cardigan. And I will be back when I get that far. So that's two rows of knit one pearl one rib I've done. And now I'm going to work out where to put the buttonholes. And that is what the um, stitch markers are for. So I will place the first one. I put the, um, the stitch markers over the knit stitch. On here, so I'll put the first one probably on there. That's where I'm going to make the first buttonhole, or one of the buttonholes. I'll do it from the top. Put one at the top where I'm going to put it at the top as well. And then I'll work out how many stitches, how many knit stitches between one, two, three, four, five. I'll put it on the sixth one until I get them all in and then I'll work them out even. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That means one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be a little bit closer up the top because of the way the, the things have worked out. So that's how I work out how I place the, um, the buttonholes and I'll show you when I come to, to do them now. I'm going to start off with a knit and a purl. And I knit the stitch that the stitch, stitch marker is on. It's, they're always on a knit stitch. So I knit that stitch, bring the wool forward, knit into the next two stitches together. And if you want to, I, I'm just using small buttons for this. I'm only using 14 millimeter buttons. But if I wanted a buttonhole for a bigger button, like a 16 millimeter, I would hold 
I make the end of the wool loose like that and hold it and knit it so that the the yarn over part is slack and that gives you a larger buttonhole but I don't want a larger one because I've got smaller buttons so I'm just holding the yarn in front of the needle going to knit the two stitches together loosely not tightly if you knit them too tight that will pull that stitch tight and then you're knitting your, your buttonhole will be very small you might not get your buttons through so I'm going to rip to the next button the next stitch marker And that's the next stitch marker, so I'm going to knit that stitch my wool forward and then knit two together. And I'm at my last stitch marker, so I'm going to knit that stitch, bring the wool forward and knit two together. And then rip to the end of the row. So that's all the buttonholes done. So I'll take these stitch markers out because I don't need them now when they get in the way when you're knitting. I'll put them into back into my little bag. That was a little bag that was sent to me by Priscilla. She's Distinctive Crochet. Very handy little bag. She sent me that because of my bingo. She says it's a bingo bag. Because <laughs> it's got the, all the numbers like a bingo board. And so now I'm going to knit one more row. And knit one pull, one rib. And when I come to the, the buttonhole stitch, where I made the stitch is a knit stitch. I don't go into the back of it because it's a buttonhole, so I'll just knit into the front of it. If you knit into the back of it, it'll tighten up the, um, the buttonhole. And now I'm going to cast off loosely for this row and that is the end, that will be the end of the, um, the band. So it's just knitting the two stitches together and taking one stitch over the other. Still knitting in twisted rib style. And don't pull the stitch tight when you're casting off. Or you would pull the rib or you would pull the band too tight. I will meet you at the end of that row. On to the last few stitches now.
So now I just need to cut this off. And pull it through and when I can stitch that end in. And that's the cardigan just wants the buttons on now. Put that down. That's one side. And the other side. Now I have to mark where I'm going to put the buttons now. I'll put the pin, just line it up with the um, the buttons on the other side, that's one there. One there. Now I use these leftover bits of yarn to sew what buttons I can with that first. And that's not my needle I'm using. First. I have to wet it to get it through the hole. <laughs> the, hole. the eye of the needle. I've got one of those things for threading these. I should get it out. <laughs> that's it. So I'm going to take this bit of wool along the along the inside to where the the button goes. And take the, the pin out. Just for the first button now. I'll probably only get one button out of this this one. I'm going to put this button on now. I'm only going twice through this button because uh, it's quite hard to get it through. And fasten off on the other side. And up through the hole and tighten it. that button there through that buttonhole and that is how you put the buttons on and I will do the rest of the buttons and show you well, that is how the cardigan looks now with the buttons on all buttons in place so that is the end of that tutorial and the start of another PDF and then into a pattern. Um, this is the first size I've done in it, the 16 inch, but I do have a 26 inch, which I can add to this. So there'll be six sizes on the um, the PDF when um, I get it done. Don't know how long it's going to take me because um, I have to knit the other sizes first. So a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I'll catch you some more some other time, so bye for now.